Hey guys, this is Mr. Burns coming to you from the math cave, similar to the bat cave, but much, much cooler. Um, last couple classes we've been finishing up Unit 7 and uh, a couple requests for a little uh, similarity review, so I thought I might make a little video. Uh, let me just bring a picture up here. Um, before we get started into specifically uh, similar triangles, we'll talk a little bit about the idea of similarity and what exactly does that mean. So let me just bring a picture of a uh, little kitty cat up here. So this is my friend. He looks like a Felix, I think, and uh, we'll clone him. Cats is always better than one, of course. And I'll shrink him down a little bit. Um, so in, in the first couple sections of the chapter, we talked about scale factor and enlargements and reductions. So let me just get a little arrow tool here. So if we were to go this way, so this being our original, this would be our reduction. So um, basically, everything is exactly the same shape. It's just this one's a little smaller. Um, let me just delete that. Mm -hmm. And what if we go the other way? Well, if we went the other way, this being our original here, little this little guy, and this would be our enlargement. So again, exactly the same shape, except this one's a little bigger. Um, so you sort of see the idea of similarity is that. In order for something to be similar, it either has to be an enlargement or a reduction. So these two objects are similar because, well, if we're starting with this one, this one is a reduction. So they're similar. So that sort of allows us to uh, see the idea of similarity. So uh, one very, very simple definition of similarity would be exactly the same shape, different size. So this guy's got a little uh, pretty big pot belly on him here. And this guy's got pot belly a little bit smaller. So, um, exactly the same, except one's a little smaller than the other. That's all. Um, so now, we'll take this definition and we'll apply it to our idea of similar triangles. S similar triangles. Let me just uh, make a little triangle for you. Oh, we won't take these boring guys here. We'll take a little take this exciting one here. Um, let's see. So here's our triangle. Let me just clone this guy. And how about another reduction? So we'll straighten that. So here we have two similar triangles, right? Because, well, this one's a reduction. So we already know they're similar, just based on the fact that this little guy is a reduction of our original triangle that I made here. Um, for th for um, triangles to be similar, they have to be either a reduction or a enlargement of whatever figure you with. Um, but we can get a little bit more specific to the details of why things are similar, or, or what uh, criteria we need to meet. And... Uh, Start, there's two things that we need to remember, so let me just get my text tool here. Um, the first thing we need to know about similar fingers is that corresponding corresponding angles are equal. So similar fingers, uh, corresponding angles are equal. So if I was going to do, show you the corresponding angles. Uh, so this angle here corresponds with this one. This angle here, and this angle corresponds. And let me just uh, do that here. Bigger dots. And these two angles correspond. So this angle and this angle are equal. This angle and this angle are equal. And this angle and this angle are equal. So these angles are said to correspond. Okay? And corresponding is a fancy word for they match up. So this one matches with this one. Okay? So if we somehow enlarge this one to the exact same size as this one, they would match up perfectly. Um, that sort of sometimes confuses people as well. Um, the second one I consider to be uh, a little bit more important. Let me just break it my tool here again. And the second one being that uh, corresponding, sorry, ratios of corresponding sides are So a ratio is a fancy word for a fraction, okay? Really fancy word for a fraction. So if we're looking at, well, what's the corresponding sides of these two similar triangles? So the corresponding sides are, well, let's start out with this here side right here. This side, I'll put a little mark on it, corresponds with this side. They're not equal. They're not probably. Not, that's probably not a good idea to put mark on it. But, um, they, they correspond. This side corresponds with this side. Let's call it 
Uh, let's call this one big A. That side big A. Let's call this one little A. So big A corresponds with little A. And then we can call this one big B and this one little B. And this one big C and this one little C. Okay? So A corresponds with little A, big B corresponds with little B, and big C, whoops, big C corresponds with little C. So um, that's not the proper way to write sides, but it illustrates the idea of corresponding. It shows which sides match up, right? And if we were to think about in a, in a sort of a broader sense of what corresponding might mean, or maybe a more specific sense, is that the reason we, these sides correspond is because this little a here is simply a reduction of bigger a. This side here is a reduction of this side. If we were to simply get rid of the triangle part, these two would be a reduction of each other, right? Because this one was our original, this is our reduction. So it's very much the same idea of our picture. And if we were, how, how do you write that, you might say? So let me just delete some of these other statements. Click. Okay. So if we were going to write that, let me just label these vertex really quickly here. So I'll call this A, B, and C. Call this X, Y, Z. So if we were going to label these vertexes, then we might uh, write a ratio. So a ratio, right here. Ratio. Well, what's a ratio? Well, a ratio looks like this. Let me just extend my page a little bit here. Um, so generally, if we're starting with, we have a, a reduction here. We can start with this triangle. It really doesn't matter. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So I'd start with X, Z. So my X, Z. Divided by A, C, because those sides correspond. Those are corresponding sides. And that's my ratio right there. And then I equal. And I start with the same triangle. Start with this triangle was on top here. So now I start with this triangle again. So I start with Z, Y. And notice how my, my corresponding angles match up in my ratios as well. So I start with Z, Y. So my angle here, C starts here. So C, B. And then I have uh, my remaining side. So X, Y. Over A, B. So there you go. That's my ratio of corresponding sides. So this is kind of, this, this is like the meat here. This is what you really, really need to know how to do to be able to match up the sides and be able to write this kind of ratio. We're really only ever concerned about two at a time when we're solving problems, but it's useful to be able to write all three and notice which ones match up. Um, so these two things are kind of important. Corresponding angles are equal and ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So let's have a look at a, a specific problem. Um, so here's a specific problem that I did up. Uh, if you talk to my, any of my former grade 9 students, they would tell you river problems are so important because they're often asked on CRTs. They are often asked on CRTs. And as, often the question goes is, uh, write and solve an equation to find the distance across this river. So what is the distance across this river? Well, the distance across this river is D. We're looking for this little guy here. So my lowercase d here, what is it? We're trying to find it. And you might say, well, I don't need to find that. Let's see. Well, you would not want to leave your kitty cat stranded across the side of the river, now would you? So my kitty cat is over here. And you, sir, are, let me see, over here. And you need to find that distance because if it's under 20 meters, then you can swim it. But if it's not, then you have to get a boat. So um, you need to get across the river to save your little kitty cat. So. Um, we're going to assume that these triangles are similar. Well, it probably will be tell, told to you in the problem um, that these triangles are similar. So first of all, we're looking to match up some uh, some corresponding sides. We can say these two angles are equal because they're opposite angles. You may not know that, but that's really not important. But I'll just do it for the sake of completeness here. Um, so we need to write a ratio and solve it. And hopefully that will find our distance across the river. So let's start with uh, start with this triangle right here. So I always, when I write my ratio, I start with D. So start with my unknown, my distance that I'm trying to find, so my D. I don't, I'm not using my smartphone right now. I'm simply using my laptop and my little tablet, mousepad thingy. Um, 
I don't have my smartphone at home. I wish I did, so I can watch watch the hockey game on my smartphone tonight. That'd be sick. Um, so I start with my variable D, and I always put that on top just based on the fact that if it's on top, it's easier to solve for. Um, and I'm looking for the corresponding side of D. So D is here. My corresponding side, hopefully I can see this, is 56.7. So that's my corresponding side with D. So 56.7. So that's my corresponding side. D, D and 56.7 correspond. So now I'm going to put my equal sign here. And I'm looking to uh, write another ratio here that it's equal to. Now, one mistake that students often make is they now go back and start with this triangle. But look, we put D on top of this, put D on top here. So we have to start with 17.2. And the question I get asked is, sir, is this a reduction or enlargement? It doesn't say in the question. Well, it doesn't really matter as long as we have everything the same. Okay, so what I mean by the same is that we're being consistent. I, D is, is in this little triangle here, and that's on top. 17.2 is in this little triangle here, and that's also in the numerator. Okay, so just be consistent, and everything will work out no matter what. So 17.2, and I'm looking for the corresponding side of 17.2. Well, it's this guy down right here, like 52.4. So I'll write 52.4. And now I have uh, an equation. Whoops, didn't want to do that. And now I have an equation that I can solve. Let me just write this for a little bit. Um, now, so now I have an equation that I can solve and hopefully find the distance across this river so we can rescue that little cat, kitty cat over there. So um, we talked a little bit about it in class with cross multiplication. And we multiply this way and we multiply this way. But we want to sort of steer, stay away from that because it's a bit of a gimmick. Um, so what we can do is simply calculate this thing right here. Okay. So 17.2 divided by 52.4. So I'll break up my trusty calculator, my web and email. So here we go. So oh, I didn't want to answer. 17.2 uh, divided by 52.4. And I get this gnarly looking decimal thing. Well, that's fine. Um, so I'll just write it. Zero decimal three. So uh, three decimal places is fine for me. Some teachers might say I hope uh, keep more, but I think that's pretty good. Um, three, three decimals will work. So this is one of the places where cross multiplication actually helps us out here. Um, and cross multiplication can be good at times, but sometimes it can really fail us. So um, we know that if we want to get rid of this denominator here, that we can multiply both sides by 56.7, or essentially think of the cross. We're only going to do it one way. We're going to do it this way. We're going to multiply 56.7 times 0 decimal 3 to it. So let me just write that. So I get 56.7 times 0 decimal 3 to 8. And I'll break out my web and email once more. And I'll clear it. And I'll go 56.7. Zero decimal three two eight, and hit my enter button, and I get an answer of eighteen point six meters, and that's my distance across the river. So I just found that this guy is eighteen point six meters away. So I know I'm a championship swimmer. I can swim twenty meters without uh, getting tired, and I can rescue my cat. The only question is, how would he get it back across? Um, so if this was a word problem on a you know in-class assignment or a test, you'd have to write your concluding statement. So let me just help you out with that. The distance across the river is 18.6 meters. Make sure we include our units. And that would be a complete answer there, making sure including statements, and sometimes we might want to box out our answer as well to make sure it's visible for the person who's correcting our exam. So that's an example there of a typical uh, similarity problem and what you might see with a similar triangle. So hopefully that cleared things up a little bit for you.